Everybody. Welcome back to part two of the farmhouse table build. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make the base of the table. I'd like to take a moment to thank everybody that watched part one in this how to build a farmhouse table series. And I'd like to ask that everybody could like and subscribe on this video if you get a chance. It does help me out in making more content. So as we do with most every single build, we start out by cutting our lumber down to size jointing and planing it to get it down to the thickness and shape that we need to start building the table. With all the wood jointed and planed, we can now work on the joinery. For the cross section of the table base, I'm going to be using a sliding dovetail. So here I am cutting the sliding portion of the dovetail using the router. This process is repeated on both sides and then I move on to the tail portion of the dovetail. I could do this with the table saw, but I decided to cut this one by hand using my marker gauge and my dovetail saw. Thank you. 
After the tail has been cut, I have to notch out the end since the sliding portion of the dovetail in the rails does not go all the way through. With the dovetails complete, I can turn my attention onto the table legs. These chunky turned legs I got from Carolina Leg Company are perfect for this table, but I need to notch out the inside corner on all four of them to allow for my angled bracket to sit on the table leg. I do this to support the weight of the table base on the leg and it helps prevent it from bowing out during use. Since the legs are awkwardly shaped and I have to cut a 45 degree angle on them, I created this sliding jig to allow me to set the table leg on the jig at the 45 degree angle and stabilize it so that I can make it a repeatable cut each time. Using my digital level, I made sure that the leg was parallel with the table saw to make sure that the cut would not be at an angle. Once that was repeated on all four legs, I then flipped them straight up using my miter fence at a 45 degree angle. I can then trim off the excess material. Just a little more cleanup with a chisel and they are good to go. Now that the legs have been notched, I can go ahead and cut the angle bracket that attaches the two side rails, ensuring that a nice snug fit is achieved. From there, I go over to my drill press with the angle bracket attached to the table leg so that I can drill out the holes for the threaded inserts where I'll bolt the leg onto the table base. I do it this way so that I can ensure that the holes will line up. Once all the holes are drilled, I can then take the angle brackets over to the pocket hole jig and cut the pocket holes to attach the angle bracket onto the table base rails. I used pocket holes here because 
a sliding dovetail on a 45 was just a little more than I wanted to undertake at this time. Here I am attaching the threaded inserts into the table legs so that I can dry fit them one last time before I begin the table base construction. Using some clamps and glue, I then attach the angle bracket with the table leg attached to the table base. Rinse and repeat that four times and the table base is complete. Well that wraps up the part two of how to build a farmhouse table. In this video we went over how to build the base of the table. In the first video we went over how to build the table top and in part three I'll be showing you how I build the bench base and then put it all together. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.